Hey guys, Corey, Famous Media, and today we're gonna to be looking at some awesome products from Kessler Crane, the pocket jibs. So guys, today looking at the different pocket jibs and mounting options from Kessler Crane. But before we begin, big shout out to Nate over at Kessler and of course all the guys at Kessler uh, for hooking me up with this stuff. And also uh, just wanted to let everyone know that they are great people, fantastic customer service, and the products are extremely high quality for a very affordable cost. Uh, we're going to get into all that as we go through the review, but I just want to give a big shout out to everybody over at Kessler. You guys are fantastic, and uh, we're going to start getting into this review, uh, and I'm going to start reviewing a lot of Kessler equipment. So before we get started, we're going to just go ahead and look at all of them, compare the specs and the mounting options. Then we're going to go ahead and start using them individually and setting them up. Uh, and showing you how they work. First, you have the Pocket Jib Traveler, which weighs about 5.5 pounds. It's very light, it folds up, it can fit in a backpack. It can hold up to 10 pounds. Uh, so I would recommend using it for DSLRs, uh, the mirrorless cameras from Sony's like the A7S, A7S Mark II, A7R Mark II. Uh, you could use the Pocket Cinema Camera from Blackmagic as well. And you can also get away with using the Cinema Camera and the production camera. If you're gonna be using the battery on it or a light on top, you start pushing the limits. As long as you're less than 10 pounds, you're good to go. It shouldn't be a, a problem for those cameras at all. So by the time you move to the Pocket Jib and Pocket Jib Pro, they may look the same, but they're actually very different. The arms are much thicker on the Pro. It also has one extra smaller arm in the bottom to help stabilize it more. The difference in weight is the Pocket Jib weighs 21 pounds and the Pocket Jib Pro weighs 25 pounds. So there's a four pound difference there. Not a whole lot once they're both fully you know, folded up and the heads are retracted. Uh, everything is pretty much about the same size. It's just there's about four pounds of weight difference between the two. Now, the Pocket Jib will only hold 20 pounds when fully extended. If it's fully uh, retracted in its shortest configuration, you will get 40 uh, pounds worth of weight on the front. Whereas the Pocket Jib Pro, it doesn't matter if it's fully extended or fully retracted, you're going to get 50 pounds. So that's what you have to ask yourself is what you're really shooting on. Personally, I shoot on uh, red and black magic, so I like to be safe, so I shoot on the Pro. Um, and I absolutely loved it. I've been using it this last couple of months um, since they've given this stuff to me to test and it has been amazing. Um, the Pocket Jib Traveler, uh, I have used a whole bunch too and it gets into smaller situations with my Sony a7S. So I've been using them both a lot. Uh, the Pocket Jib itself is very similar, like I said, to the Pro. I haven't used it as much. It's very much the same as the other two, same principle, and very similar to the Pocket Jib Pro. It just depends on your uses and how much weight you need. So if you're using the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, DSLRs, like I said, the A7S, A7R Mark II, this is the one I would get for sure if that's all you're gonna be shooting on and in small situations. If you need higher reach, you wanna have the camera sitting a little higher, you can use those cameras on either the Pocket Jib or Pocket Jib Pro. If you plan on shooting strictly with the production, the Ursa Mini, or uh, the Cinema Camera, I would definitely recommend using the Pocket Jib. Uh, you can even get some red configurations on the Pocket Jib, although I'd recommend the Pro just to have peace of mind when shooting on the red, as you can get well into 15 pounds with the red setups, even 20, uh, which is fine, but that's the limit of this, and I really don't like pushing limits. I like to be a little bit below the limit so it's safe, although this will definitely handle what they're rated for and probably more, but I'm just being conservative. So if you're using uh, a camera that's 20 pounds or less fully set up, the Pocket Jib is perfect for you. Uh, the Ursa Mini, uh, the production camera, the cinema camera, the Red Scarlet and Epic, uh, set up with just a lens, the handle, the V-mount battery, maybe a, a cheese plate and a light, that's, that's all gonna work with the Pocket Jib. Anything more than that, like the full-size Ursa, if you're running a full-on Red Epic or Scarlet setup, uh, you're gonna wanna go over to the Pocket Jib Pro. Uh, I have them all fully extended to their max height right now. Um, I have them set up in different tripods, although I do recommend if you're using the Pocket Jib Pro or the Pocket Jib, I, I highly recommend using Kessler's Hercules head and uh, K-Pod tripod as that it will handle so much more weight. Uh, the tripod's rated uh, for 500 pounds and the head is rated for 150 pounds. 
So that tripod will handle a ton of weight, much more than any of these jibs can handle. In fact, the KC light jib that they have, uh, this would be great to use for that as well. But let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the different mounting options. Nate has sent me over so much stuff. Um, like I said, I've got this mounted on a regular tripod, which I don't recommend. It's got the 3 8 mount on the bottom of the pocket jib traveler. Kessler makes like a round disc 3 8 to 3 8 uh, dual sided uh, adapter that you can put on the slider and you can use that with your fluid video head. You can use that exact same setup for the pocket jib traveler. You could put that on the Hercules head, lock it in and just use the 3 8 female threaded mounting uh, position on the bottom of this just to mount it directly to the head since it's a pan and tilt head anyway. Uh, there's also different options, which Nate has sent me over so many different goodies here. Um, you can use uh, this quick mini plate right here with the quick release. So you could screw this in uh, to the bottom of your pocket jib traveler. You can put the quick release plate on the uh, K-Pod and Hercules head and you can mount that directly over. Although I do not recommend the quick release setup um, as Nate has advised me, it's not really recommended for the Pocket Jib or Pocket Jib Pro due to the weight. Um, I would say that if you're using the Traveler, you probably could get away with that without much of an issue at all. I, I'm, the plate will hold the weight, but it's not worth the risk. Um, I recommend though directly mounting this to the Hercules head. I'll put a link down there in the bottom to all these products so you guys can research them and figure out what exactly it is that you need. So I've got the quick release plate here. It works pretty much with all of their uh, accessories, including um, the quick mini plate and of course the short plate as well as the long plate, which I have in the bottom. Uh, they all fit into this quick release plate that you can use to mount different cameras and different setups. Um, as you can see, uh, there's all kinds of different things you can use depending on what you need. Uh, they have everything right there in the store. They also make uh, a square accessory plate which will mount into the quick release plate, which is identical to the top of the Hercules head. The, the top of this plate, it's square, about the same size as the Hercules head, and allows you to have the same mounting options. And what I mean by that is if something mounts directly to the Hercules head, it's not going to mount to a regular plate because the Hercules head set up completely different. Well, this mounting plate has the same setup, which means you can lock in your jibs to that plate and then put the quick release plate on the Hercules head and have a quick release system if your camera is light enough. So it's a very modular system. Uh, you can replace pretty much anything like the knobs on any of the arms if you need to. The bowl can be replaced and moved. These three Allen keys on either side, you can replace the mounting plates to the top. Uh, everything's very modular and you can replace anything that you lose or if you need a spare part, you can get any of them in the store. It is fantastic. But enough of me talking about the whole setups. So let's go ahead and use them. When I come back, we're going to have the jibs all broken down and we're going to show you how to set each one up and use it. So first we have the pocket jib traveler and as you can see, it's very light, only five and a half pounds. You can put it in your backpack in a bag that you're carrying or carry it by hand. It's very, very light. So we're gonna go ahead and get this set up and there's two ways you can do that. You can use Kessler's quick mini release plate here that you can lock on to the bottom right here where it mounts and you can mount that to uh, the pocket jib traveler and then you can mount the quick release plate to the Hercules head with uh, two quarter 20s and then you can just snap it in place but I don't recommend using quick release uh, for a jib as Kessler has recommended not to use it. So you can, but I just really don't recommend it. In fact, the better alternative is this mounting adapter from Kessler, which I use on the top plate of my cine slider to mount my fluid video head. And what you can do is you can mount this to the Hercules head uh, right here. It's a double three eighths and lock that in place to the head. And then you can place this on top and you're just going to turn it gently to get it started. You don't want to strip it and you're just going to turn it around and lock it in place since you're only going to have 10 pounds on this. This is all that you're really going to need. And I've used it like this many times and it works perfectly and you don't got to worry about having a quick release plate on there. So let's go ahead and uh, start setting this up. But just remember, you're going to have to set it to the 60 degree mark on uh, the measuring dial here. This way you can bring this back, fold everything together. It'll be nice and compact and fit in all your bags or your backpacks. Um, let's go ahead and get this set up first. Unlock your Hercules head so it can turn. And then you're going to unlock this arm right here. And you're, of course, going to counterclockwise on your pivoting knob right here so you can bring the pocket jib traveler down. Now I'm going to bring this around to show you. When you bring this arm back, you're going to pull it out 
and you're gonna slide it back in. It's gonna fit right back into the uh, arm here and you're gonna undo your knob and you're gonna tighten it. So it's gonna lock in place right here. It basically slides in to the recess area here on the pocket jib traveler arm. Now you're gonna fully extend uh, your weight bar here or at least three quarters of the way so you can um, figure out how you wanna set up your counterbalancing weights. Um, you're gonna bring this piece that mounts your camera, it's the mounting head, and you're gonna pull the pin right here to lock it down and it's gonna lock in place. Um, now you can go ahead and extend uh, the arm to get the amount of length you want. So I'm gonna set it up to max height and every time you extend the length, you have to add more weight to the back. And the heavier your camera is, the more weight you're gonna have to add. So just remember that. So here we go, it's set up. Let me loosen this just a little bit. So it's not balanced and doesn't have a camera on it yet, but as you can see, you are ready to mount your camera and start getting set up. Lock this off. And next I'm gonna go ahead and get the weights and show you how to put those on. And I'm gonna get the camera mounted and we're gonna take a few shots. So I got the Sony a7S with the Shogun recorder ready to mount to one of the quarter 20 holes, which are four of them uh, in a star pattern. You basically got 12 o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, three o'clock, and a three eighths on that plate. It comes with a quarter 20 locking uh, knob. Before we mount that, I'm gonna add some weight to the back to help balance it out because when we add the camera, it's gonna, bring the front down a lot considering it's longer in the front than it is in the rear. So you can see symmetrically, it's going to just take a nosedive. So you wanna add a little bit of weight to the rear first. Let's go ahead and uh, lock some weight in place. I'm gonna go ahead and add five pounds and we're gonna bring it all the way back. This way it doesn't uh, throw the rear down too much, but it's gonna add enough weight so that when you're adding your camera, it's not gonna fly down on you in the front. As you can see, it's pulling the rear down a little bit, but no big deal. By the time you add the camera, things will start to balance out nicely. I'm gonna lock this in place. And as you can see, it looks like it's holding up pretty nice. We're gonna go ahead and check it. It should just sit normal with that weight. Still a little bit front heavy. So we'll lock it off. We'll add just a bit more weight. 2.5 pounds more on the rear should be perfect. So now we got our pocket jib traveler set up. Gonna go ahead and turn the camera on. You push up or down on it and it should come to a stop like so. Should be no fluctuation really. It should be relatively balanced. And we're gonna go ahead and take a test shot and show you how the pocket jib traveler works. So now that we got it all set up, let's go ahead and take a few shots and see how it looks. It's really a gem to use, the Pocket Jib Traveler. It's so small and most people have DSLR, so they're able to take this pretty much anywhere they go. An A7S, a lens, and the Pocket Jib Traveler, and even these small weights that are only seven and a half pounds, you're looking at like a 15 to 18 pound setup in a bag, couple of lenses and accessories, and your tripod. It's a very mobile setup if you're shooting anywhere, uh, mountain hiking, you're out in uh, the wilderness, you're on a movie set, doesn't matter where you're at. If you need something that's robust, strong, long lasting, works perfectly, great build quality and super light and easy to get around and not huge, this is the setup for you. It is fantastic. So make sure you lock off the Hercules head anytime you're shooting with the pocket jib travel the pocket jib or the pocket jib pro and use the flat side and the washer up on the bottom of the bowl here to make sure it's locked in place and you don't get side to side movement at all when shooting with the jib because you're going to have some weight on there especially if you're shooting with red or black magic cameras and you're shooting on the pocket jib or the pocket jib pro you're going to have all kinds of weights so you're going to make sure that is balanced as best as possible you also want to make sure that your dial here that locks uh, the rotation on your jib is snug so it doesn't wobble back and forth So as you can see, the Pocket Jib Traveler is very, very smooth, easy to use. The shots look beautiful. You'd never be able to get those shots unless you had a jib, and most jibs and cranes are huge, and they're hugely expensive. 
These are so small and compact and great build quality and very affordable from a great company. So I'm gonna show you how to break the Pocket Jib Traveler down. We're gonna move on to the Pocket Jib Pro, which is the same setup as the Pocket Jib. Uh, so we're just gonna skip the Pocket Jib and go right to the Pocket Jib Pro just because they're identical in every way, just one slightly heavier and handles more weight. So before we go ahead and take the camera off, you wanna take off at least some of the weight back here so that the jib doesn't come flying up when you take the camera off. Take off the 2.5 pound weight. Then we'll take off the camera. And then your jib will probably move a little bit, but no big deal. We're gonna go ahead and take this weight off. And then we're gonna make sure to put your, uh, your retainer clip right back where it was on the bottom here of the pocket jib traveler pull your pin bring that back you're going to want to bring this back and it locks in place by the little grooves that are in the arms so you're going to want to lock this all the way back make sure it's snug make sure the twist knobs fit in the recesses in the arm then you're going to go ahead and unlock this knob right here, which will allow you to fully extend this arm and swing it around this way, and then tighten the knob snug. Then you're gonna undo this knob here, which is your tilt knob, and you're gonna tilt this back to the 60 degrees, like I was saying earlier, lock it in place. You've also got the strap now that you can completely bring around and lock all this in place, uh, and it's perfectly set up and ready to put away. And you're gonna take this off the Hercules head in the same way we put it on earlier. Just gonna twist it to unlock and remove. So there you have it, that is the Pocket Jib Traveler. It's very small, very light, very robust, and will hold any camera under 10 pounds and only weighs 5.5 pounds. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get the Pocket Jib Pro set up. So here we go guys, get ready to look at the Pocket Jib Pro. Again, I'm just skipping over the Pocket Jib because they're essentially the same, just the Pocket Jib is four pounds lighter than the Pocket Jib Pro, 21 versus the 25 pounds. Uh, and it only handles 20 pounds fully extended or 40 pounds fully uh, retracted, whereas the Pro will handle 50 in any configuration due to the thicker arms and it has the one extra bottom arm to support the weight. Other than that, the setup and how you use it is identical and how it mounts, everything's the same. So as you can see, the Pocket Jib Pro isn't as light as the Pocket Jib Traveler and it's definitely not as easy to get around with. Can you imagine putting this on your shoulder? I don't think so. But it does handle much more weight and if you got a really big rig and a big camera set up, this is the jib for you. Let's go ahead and mount it first, show you how to set it up and then use it. There's two screws, uh, female threaded screw holes on the bottom of the head. And there's also many quarter 20 holes in the jib. So we're gonna line them up and we're gonna use the thumb screw locks that come with the jib and you're gonna lock it in place. It's not hard to set this up. You just gotta balance and get the holes lined up then you can lock it into place. Make sure you snug them well. It is gonna be counterbalanced, so you don't gotta to go too crazy, but make sure they're good and snug. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and lock the brake. On this side, it's a little different than the Pocket Jib Traveler. It has a much bigger knob for tilting your jib, but then there's a brake in the bottom. Make sure you tighten the brake good so we can go ahead and set this up. So I've already got this set up, but it does reverse and collapse. I've got it facing forward now and ready. Uh, you can mount any head directly to it. I'm gonna mount my video head here, which is my Benro S8 head, which I've done you know, all my videos with, and I've got the links down there in the bottom for you. It's a great head, great customer service. Once that's locked in place, you can go ahead and get it set up however you want. We're gonna mount the camera up here, which I got the Blackmagic production camera, which is much heavier than the A7S. Uh, and we're gonna lock that in place. And because this has a break, you don't have to worry about setting up weights in the back first, unless your rig is really heavy. If your rig is more uh, than 10 or 15 pounds, you'll probably wanna set some weight on the back first. But I'm gonna show you how to set the back up. We're gonna turn this around. So first, you're gonna undo both knobs on either side. Let me turn this around so you can see it. You're gonna to wanna to undo these and slide it to the rear. Once you lock them in the recesses in the arm on both sides, you're gonna to wanna to turn these and loosen them to bring the extension bars out. And you're gonna pull them both out 
and then swing it around like so, and then lock it into place. And you're going to want to lock these, and once they're tight, you can always lift them up. If they're in the way, you can just kind of lift them up, lock them back with the bar so they're parallel, so they don't stick out or grab anything or get stuck. Now you're ready to add some weight to the jib setup. So we're going to start by adding some weight to the back. I would recommend about five to 10 pounds on either side, uh, depending on your weight setup. With this, I'm probably going to start with five just to see where we're at. Undo the brake just a bit to see how our weight is set up. And as you can see, it's a little front heavy. So I'm going to add another 2.5 pounds to either side. And then we're going to check it again. And as you can see, it's still a little front heavy, but it's very easy to move it. So I'm going to reduce the traction here. And it looks like I need about two pounds on either side more. So I'm going to take the two pound weights off and add five pound weights to either side. So I'm looking at about 10 pounds on either side. So it's taking about 20 pounds of counterweight. So if you had lights and stuff, you need about 25 pounds. And with a red, you're going to need about 40 pounds on the rear just depending on what your setup is like. So as you can see, it's a little heavy in the rear, but that's fine because I'm gonna to wanna to extend the camera in the front anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and extend the front, but before you do that, I'm gonna recommend going ahead and taking the camera back off. I could probably get away with it with this camera and lens because it only weighs about four or five pounds. Uh, once you start getting 10, 15 pounds, it, it's not recommended. So just make sure you have your extension on your arm the way you want it and if not, remove the camera in between when you are extending. So you're gonna pull this out. Once all the knobs are equally loosened, we're gonna pull this all the way out. I'm gonna to go to the second last. I'm not gonna go all the way to the last. And the more you extend it, the more weight you're gonna need. Got both these locked in place. Gonna lock this side in place as well. And once you've done that, you'll be able to add your camera back and I'm gonna to have to definitely add some more weight to the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the 10 pound weight and the five pound weight so that I can get more on the rear because it's a little front heavy. This should be enough. It may be a little rear heavy, but it's fine. It's the perfect balance. A little front heavy still, but very slight as you can see. It's very well balanced now. We'll go ahead and put the uh, locking clips on here. You just slide them right back. Same as we did on the pocket jib traveler. Now you're set up, the brake is very loose right now, so it's balanced itself, really. I mean, it'll, it'll just kind of hold its own balance once you've got the weights and the camera set up perfectly. It is awesome. Gonna go ahead and turn the Blackmagic production camera on and we're gonna get some shots with this camera. Just remember, a very important thing to do when you're setting this up is make sure to lock the front of your head right here. Remove it from the front pin. Make sure to lock the horizontal axis off of your Hercules head, especially if your camera is more than 10 pounds. You don't want this head tilting forward. Plus you've got the little uh, levelers built into the head. You wanna use the flat side up on the washer on the bottom so that you don't get much tilt from this head. You wanna really lock the head off well with the tripod while shooting with a heavy rig. So before I forget, I just wanna mention one thing before we shoot with the Pocket Jib Pro. You've got two brackets here on the arms of the Pocket Jib Pro as well as the Pocket Jib with some spacers here and you've got two Allen key screws here. Now, they have to be spaced out a little bit more. You'll have to set it up if you wanna use it, but what it's for is I brought out my Cine slider to show you. On the bottom of the Kessler Cine slider, you have all these mounting options on the bottom. These female quarter 20s here on either side allow you to mount the Cine slider directly to the Pocket Jib and the Pocket Jib Pro. So it's a very modular setup. It's very straightforward. You just basically unlock them from the bottom. You have two Allen key uh, studs that are on the bottom. Loosen them and space it out a little bit more to line up with your Cine slider. Then you can mount the Cine slider directly to uh, the jib. So if you got the jib and you're getting shots with it and you wanna get a slider shot and don't wanna break the jib off the tripod, which I don't at weddings when I'm shooting them, or commercials, events, whatever I'm doing, I don't wanna be breaking this up and down all the time. So what I do is I just mount it directly to the Pocket Jib Pro and I get my slider shot. So it's a great modular setup, but let's go ahead and get some shots with the production camera on the Pocket Jib Pro. You're gonna get much more height out of this than you will with 
the pocket jib traveler. So we're gonna get a much higher shot. I'm just gonna level it off so my shot is straight. There we go. Make sure to lock off your head and use the flat side up. So here we go. It's just an amazing jib to use. Make sure you don't go too loose on your pivoting lock right here because you don't want uh, the jib to be too loose and wobble horizontally during your shots. Make sure your brake isn't snug either, otherwise that'll drag against the jib uh, and make it harder to pan and tilt with. Gonna get one more shot here. Just fantastic jib to use. You can also operate the jib from the front. It's very easy to do that. You're checking your focus and you can shoot just by panning up. So it's not hard to use at all. You can also get HDMI cables to come down, different mounting options to get you set up here. You could mount anything on top of the jib. If you need a monitor here, you can mount it there as well. It's, like I said, a very modular setup, so it's easy. So let's go ahead and uh, break this down and show you how easy it is to put it back to its original configuration and get it all set up to put away. First, you'll move the camera off. So now that we got the camera off, let's go ahead and break this down and show you how easy it is uh, to do that. First, you're gonna remove the video head unless you wanna leave it on. I always take it off. This way it's not as heavy to carry around and it's easier to store places. Now because uh, it's got a brake uh, that you can use on it, you don't have to worry about taking the weights off until the camera's been removed, although I do remove some of the weight depending on how heavy the setup is. So we're gonna go ahead and get the weights off and leave these about a half to three quarters of an inch off the edge so that when you put it back, everything lines up perfectly. Very easy setup to work with. Kessler has done a lot of research and done a lot of development on uh, this setup and it is just a great setup. There isn't a jib out there that will do what this will do for its price, for its construction quality uh, and its weight. It's not even that heavy for a jib really, 25 pounds for a jib that compacts like this and then extends and carries this kind of weight and with this much strength is unheard of. Now we've got everything all locked in on the rear. We can go ahead and loosen the brake, lift the front up just a bit. This way we can fold this back undo these knobs on either side, top and bottom. And then you can grab this handle here and push it all the way back. Now just to mention, um, this is actually the ball adapter kit which you'll have to get separately from the Pocket Jib Pro but it is a great thing to have. So hopefully you guys found this review helpful. The Pocket Jib Traveler, the Pocket Jib, and the Pocket Jib Pro, and all the mounting accessories available to you. If you're wondering if I'm gonna do any more reviews on the mounting uh, plates, the quick release plates, the sliders, the tripod, the head, I'm gonna be doing reviews on all that stuff uh, in the coming weeks and months. And of course, I'm gonna try my best uh, with Nate over at Kessler to get set up with the automated uh, stuff for the Cine slider so you can set your camera to slide automatically, control it from your iPhone, all that good stuff from Kessler. They make the best stuff, I'm telling you. It is great and it's very affordable. Uh, the build quality of the Pocket Jib uh, Pro and the Pocket Jib are they're like tanks. If you drop this on the floor, it's gonna put a hole in the floor. Uh, very, very good build quality, and the price on all this stuff is just ridiculously cheap for the quality that you're getting. Kessler have done an amazing job with this. Uh, the Pocket Jib Traveler uh, is a great piece of equipment, and for its size uh, and its weight, 
The build quality is unbelievably great. Uh, it will hold up to 10 pounds and it is just a very, very solid built product and very stable when using cameras 10 pounds or less. It is a great product to use if you're trying to run and gun. So that's what I recommend if you're asking yourself, which one do you need? If all your cameras are 10 pounds or less, get the Pocket Jib Traveler. You'll be able to maneuver around more and go places quicker and it's lighter. If you've got a red setup or a black magic setup or an RE setup and you need something a little bit stronger, the Pocket Jib is the way to go. But if you're over 15 pounds or 20 pounds, I recommend the Pocket Jib Pro because it's gonna allow you to have all that extra weight and you get 50 pounds fully extended. So that's gonna be what decides which you need. Personally, I am going to uh, keep the Pocket Jib Pro and the Pocket Jib Traveler because I want the options and the versatility to have both. And at the price point of these jibs, you're able to do that. They are just great pieces of equipment. Hopefully you guys have found this review helpful. So big shout out to Nate over at Kessler. Thank you so much for getting me all this great gear. And thanks so much guys over at Kessler for giving great customer service and building such a great product. I love all the Kessler products. I use all of them here on a daily basis. Doesn't matter what I'm shooting. I cannot live without the pocket jib now, even though I've only been using it two months. And I definitely can't live without my Cine slider or my Hercules head and K-Pod uh, tripod. There's just no way I use it every time I shoot. To purchase any of this gear that I reviewed today and to support the channel and keep the reviews coming, use the links down there in the information box. Uh, to support this channel and keep the awesomeness coming. Uh, I'm gonna have the Ursa Mini 4.6K review coming up real soon. I'm dealing with uh, Dan May and uh, Terry over at Blackmagic. Hopefully we'll have that real soon. I'm working uh, with some guys over at Sony to get my hands on the A7S Mark II and get that review for you as well. I'm also still working on getting my hands on the Rokinon uh, Zine Cine lenses uh, to review them also. And I'm gonna be working with Nate to get some more Kessler stuff in. So got some good stuff coming for you guys. Don't forget to subscribe and happy shooting.